I'm going to talk about the most essential element in watercolour painting that I feel, and that's the light. So, shall we get started? For a full list of all the materials I'm using, colours and the photo link can be found in the description. I'm using cold pressed paper. I'm going to start out with just two colours, Payne's Grey and Yellow Ochre. You could use indigo or black and you could also use raw sienna or quinacridone gold. I've got two big puddles. To reserve the lightest light, I'm using torn framing tape. You can use masking tape just to make sure it doesn't tear your paper when you remove it. So I would test the paper. But I'm just sticking this down here and that's going to reserve the light in the water. And I'm wetting the paper now with a large flat one inch soft head brush all over just with clean water really allow that water to soak into the membranes of the paper this will give you more time because we're going to be painting wet into wet so I'm applying the yellow ochre first into the sort of sky area if we look at that sort of reference photograph which I love I think it's kind of a digital sort of um, photograph of maybe an original painting and it's turned into a painting but I loved it because it's so atmospheric but I want you to make this your own picture use that as a reference go by the light which is so important here and we're going to build up light to dark so wet into wet damp into wet damp into damp so this is going to be literally a painting done in one go. So there's going to be, not going to be any drying. So what I've done now is I've applied a pinch of the Payne's Grey to the yellow ochre, really diluted it. As you saw there, I took the excess paint off of my paper towel. So it's not too wet that it doesn't run all over the place. And I'm using my large size 10 brush, applying it to the middle of the sky. This is going to be the first sort of lot of trees which are going to be in the distance or it could be cloud, sort of soft yellow clouds. I'm tilting here to allow the paint to flow and I'm painting that same colour as a reflection in the water, wet into wet with my size 10 brush, adding a pinch more Payne's Grey to the yellow ochre, still very watery, very dilute and painting another sort of row of those distant trees or clouds. It can be whatever you want it to be. Just really have fun with this and make it your own. So I'm tilting it again to get the paint moving to create lovely soft edges. So maybe clouds or distant trees. So now mixing up some more of that Payne's Grey, just slightly thicker, ever so slightly. Still painting wet into wet, this time with more Payne's Grey, still with that size 10 brush. And I'm just painting a little section of paint there. I don't want the paint to run everywhere. And I'm just tilting again. You can see it's really flowing down nicely. And this creates the most wonderful soft edges, very atmospheric. So I'm actually now applying a little bit more of that color in the water. So it's like a reflection. And this is wet into wet, lovely horizontal strokes there and I'm adding a little bit more of that colour and painting it into the foreground, wet into wet. You can see on the right hand corner it's drying off a bit. If it's doing that a lot, just give it a spritz with your spritzer bottle. So this is slightly creamier yellow ochre with the Payne's Grey. You can see there's less water here and because there's less water the paint will be darker. So I'm painting this damp into wet so the surface is wet but the paint is damp it's not as wet as the puddles there in the top of my palette and I'm just tilting it there because it didn't move as much I'm just spritzing at the bottom and that's really just to dilute the paint a little bit more tilting off to the side to run all the water off the edge collect all that water on the edge and on your table surface or board and as you can see there I've let the paint run down so I'm now changing my yellow ochre to quinacridone gold. So it makes a little bit more of a greeny color. So as I'm coming into the kind of more middle distance here with grasses, I wanted the colors to look a touch more green and not such um, sort of a more neutral color as that yellow ochre and Payne's Grey. And that's the reason why I did that. I don't want the green to be bright. So I'm still sticking with that Payne's Grey. And I have to let you into a little secret. I think there is a little bit of black underneath that Payne's Grey. Um, so, the, so you can actually use black as well. So don't worry. 
um, but I'm mixing up sort of quite sort of creamy mixes here and painting that delicious dark sort of in the middle distance and also in the foreground letting it tilt letting it flow down because the surface of the painting is wet it does dilute your colors so they won't be as dark as what you have in the palette but isn't that lovely you've got those lovely look of those distant trees with the middle ground and foreground all sort of lovely and wet you can see the shine still there so as long as the shine is still on the surface of the paper it is safe to paint so I've mixed up sort of quite a creamy quinacridone gold, about 30% quinacridone gold, 70% Payne's Grey. And I'm painting this now sort of more of the sort of coming into the middle distant trees here. So it's a bit more damp into damp. So this background and middle ground aren't as wet as what they previously were. And what happens then is the paint doesn't run as much and it sort of stays put a bit more. So you've got soft edges, but they look a little bit more like the trees in the middle distance there, more solid looking. And I'm just tilting there just to run off some of that excess paint because I'm applying so much paint. There is so much excess paint. So do sort of keep tilting and collecting any puddles if you need to and just applying a little bit more of the quinacridone gold and Payne's Grey into the water there. And that's still pretty much wet in wet and a touch more dark in the foreground here, um, pretty much damp into wet. So the paper's still quite wet there. And I'm just tilting to let all that foreground sort of paint run down to create some lovely grass-like effects at the edges. Now I am using freshly tubed paint, but underneath my black, I think I've got a little bit of Daniel Smith's Lunar Black, which is a very granulating black. So I've actually got some granulation there in those trees. A bit of a happy accident because I thought I was still working with Payne's Grey. And that's what I love about watercolour. You know, you get all these happy accidents by, you know, because I work with a palette um, of empty pans which I squeeze paint in and that dries after a while and then I squeeze a little bit maybe more of a different colour, different dark on top and as that Payne's Grey has been used I've gone to that lunar black underneath so I was actually quite pleased with that. So um, I'm just applying it damp into damp there, those trees in the middle distance and using as you can see the side of my brush to paint that tree which is a bigger tree in the sort of right hand side there and it goes right up into the sky. So I'm just using the tip of my brush to create some textures damp into damp. And I'm applying that sort of creamy colour now damp into damp on the horizon line there and sort of rolling the brush there to create the look of bushes etc and doing the same in the foreground you can see how neat the paint is there's hardly any water in there you can see that in my palette as well and this is this is to ensure that it doesn't run too much um, so you can see the marks and as you can see those foreground grasses um, I've painted there really sort of come forward and I'm using this sort of creamy color here to paint smaller marks here in the middle distance and what I love is you've got that lovely light in the sky and in the water on the left hand side. And I really want to preserve that. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, to, to me, the most important thing in watercolour, and that's to myself as an artist and seeing other artists work, but also teaching it for so many years. It's all about the light because we don't really use white paint. We have to reserve that light. Um, to make our paintings look 3D and just to create atmosphere, etc. So it's really important to preserve that light. You can use masking fluid, paint round things, spritz it off, etc. But just be aware of it. So I'm just sort of stippling in here some details, damp into damp in the foreground here, just trying to be sort of creative, um, creating these sort of foliage and plants um, in the foreground, damp into damp, using my size eight round brush. And I've gone to a smaller brush now. It's my size four round brush because I just wanted a few more details here. Have you noticed when you get paint details and stronger tonal values, brighter colors, not in this instance, brighter colors, but it creates the illusion of depth in our painting. So by painting these details here quite large, um, you they come forward and the distance is soft and fuzzy and it kind of recedes 
So I'm creating the illusion of a 3D space on a 2D surface. And I would say that's one of the reasons I paint to because I love trying to create this illusion. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but I love trying and just think of this as practice. And I actually deliberately used an, a piece of paper. It was actually the front of my pad, but it got scuffed and it and had marks on it. And I just thought, well, you know what, I'll practice this and just see how this goes, because I'm not worried about the paper because it's been damaged and with, with, with all these sort of marks, etc. So still using that size four brush and painting pretty much using the black or Payne's grey on its own um, in the foreground to paint those grasses. Now I'm just painting this picture in one session. There's no drying time. So I'm painting the tree trunks and branches damp into damp. So it's really essential that you don't apply wet paint here into a drying wash because you will get cauliflowers. So literally there's hardly any water in my wash and I'm painting those sort of foreground sort of little bushes just below the trees. But as I paint those tree trunks and branches, um, one thing I would suggest is wiping your brush off on a paper towel to take off any excess paint or moisture and that stops any cauliflowers as well but do practice these techniques and what better time than on an old piece of paper or the back of an old painting and practice these techniques the wet into wet the damp into wet the damp into damp and then when your painting dries wet on dry but here again as I said one session so there won't be really any dry painting until this sort of dries off and I might sort of get away with some wet on dry towards the end of this painting we'll see how it goes but I'm just sort of building up details here with the sort of middle distant trees and distant trees there as you can see I'm using the tip of my size 4 brush pretty much using about 80% black or Payne's grey with about 20% of the quinacridone gold you could still use your yellow ochre or raw sienna but it's a nice limited um, painting so it allows you to paint rather than to worrying about your colour mixing you notice I always turn my painting to the side because I find it easier to paint those trees trunks and branches so again building up grasses in the foreground with a very dark color pulling that foreground forward again creating more details using the tip of my brush and this is very much damp into damp now you could risk actually in the foreground dropping a few sort of wet sort of puddles of paint because if you get cauliflowers in the foreground they kind of create the illusion of flowers or foliage etc but what you don't want to do is drop cauliflowers maybe into your sky area or water so more natural areas you can get away with it so going back to those trees you can see the actual surface here is nearly dry so I'm literally painting wet on dry and I'm actually lifting off some light grasses with my fingernail thank you to one of my patrons for this really cool tip it's a bit softer than using a plastic card and I'm just removing the tape to reveal some lovely light in the water and I'm just softening the edges and then adding a little bit of the quinacridone gold with a pinch of the Payne's grey or black to create some darks just underneath the light there softening and blending using my size four round brush and as you can see the paint here has nearly dried so I'm getting a bit of a dry brush effect here which is great. It creates lovely texture in the water there and just blending along there, adding a bit more dark here with the black with a touch of the quinacridone gold. And I felt I'd added a bit too much paint there, so I've just lifted off with my paper towel so I don't lose my light. And I'm going to finish off with a spatter. So I'm using my paper towel to protect the sky and the water, but this to create some textures. I'm just using the black with a pinch of the quinacridone gold and adding a few stems here and there pretty much wet on dry in this foreground area to finish off with the darks and the details which will create depth and interest in the painting just a few more little grasses here sort of um, in the water coming out of the water to add interest and you've got that lovely contrast as well dark against light and again this is pretty much wet on dry so here is the finished painting I really hope you enjoyed it 
and had fun watching this session painting from start to finish without any drying time and reserving that essential light and white of the paper. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the tutorials that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below, but you will get access to weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.